The Pilot Custom 823 is a cigar-shaped fountain pen and the only vacuum filler that Pilot makes. It was first released in the year 2000 to commemorate the 82nd anniversary of Pilot's founding, and it's available in three main colors. Amber, which is a translucent brown, clear, and the smoked gray finish that we have here today. The bottom finial is opaque and conical in shape, as is the top finial. And the top finial is separated from the cap with a single gold band that's fairly wide. We then have the classic triangular shaped pilot clip that ends in a spherical ball, and it's springy and functional. The cap has a gradual taper down to a two-piece gold band, which reads Custom 823 Pilot Made in Japan. We then have a little bit of exposed plastic followed by a step down to the barrel. The cap comes off in one and a half turns to reveal a very pretty gold nib. There's scroll work on the outside and it reads Pilot 14K585, denoting a 58.5% gold content, 15 for the size of the nib, M for the size of the tipping material, and on the side we have the date code of 423 for the month and year as produced. The section is an hourglass shape that starts with a flare up and ends with a gold band. And then the barrel is mostly straight it starts with a threaded portion that's smooth to the touch. And if we pull in some LED lighting, we can see that the interior diameter starts with a flare up in the front and then has a fairly consistent size towards the back. We then have a, another gold band followed by the piston knob. Giving the piston knob a twist, we'll retract the piston rod inside the barrel and that breaks a shutoff valve that allows ink to flow from the barrel to the section nib and feed. If I pull the piston rod a little bit back, we can see there's a slight recess at the top of the rod. What that does is it creates a little landing position so that you can feel when the piston knob is turned back enough to open up that shutoff valve without actuating the filling system. Pulling the unit back allows us to access the filling unit. Submerge the nib into ink and start pushing the piston down. Pushing the piston down creates a low pressure system behind the piston, which breaks as we get towards the bottom of the stroke in that flare out section. Breaking that seal equalizes the pressure and allows ink to be drawn up. In the hand, the pen is very well balanced and extremely comfortable. It does have some heft due to that vacuum filling system but I don't find it fatiguing at all. And the cap posts deeply and securely. It doesn't back weight the pen at all. It's an extremely well posting cap. In terms of size comparisons, here's the Pilot Custom 823, a typical Pilot G2 rollerball pen, and your standard Sharpie. Before we get into the disassembly of the Pilot Custom 823, I wanted to take a moment here to compare it with two other pen models. Up top, we have the Pilot Custom 743, which is part of the 74 series. And down below, we have the Wingsung 699, which is heavily inspired by the 823. Both of the Pilots have virtually identical pen caps. The Wingsung, on the other hand, has a little bit more of a translucent appearance. The clip is a different style that extends further down than either of the pilots. And also the Wing Sung's cap band is one piece, whereas both of the pilots have two piece cap bands. The body on the Wing Sung and 699 are very similar. They're both a smoked gray finish, but you can get them in different colors and they both contain vacuum filling mechanisms. The 743 on the other hand has a longer body and it is opaque. Um, inside, it does not have a vacuum filling system, but a cartridge converter system. The finials on both the 823 and the 699 are virtually identical, and the end finial on the 743 is small compared to the other two. Let's take a look at these pens uncapped. 
Uncapped, all three pens are very similar in length. The Wing Sung is just a little bit longer. It features a number six size stainless steel nib, and the section is also a little bit longer than either of the Pilots. Both of the Pilots feature Pilot number 15 size nibs. On the 743, I have the Falcon nib, but you can get this in the same offering as the 823. The sections are both very similar, however they are not swappable as the 743 features metal threads, whereas the 823 is all made out of plastic. Let's take a look at these pens posted. All three caps post deeply and securely, but here we can see the largest difference between these three models. In posted form, the Wingsung 699 is by far the longest. To disassemble the custom 823, you are going to need an adjustable wrench the cap unscrews, and inside this cap we do have a cap liner. However, there isn't an easy way to remove this liner, so for regular maintenance, I would recommend just running this under water, maybe using a little bit of soap. The section unscrews from the barrel. The first time I did this, it was pretty tight, but after doing it a few times, it's become easier. And then the nib and feed can be pulled right out of the section. It's important to note on the feed at the very bottom, we do have a little clear O-ring. That can be very easy to lose, so I would be very careful with that. I'm going to leave it in place right now. And then to remove the filling unit, we're going to unscrew the back piston knob and pull it back. On the threads, we have two flats, which we can use with our wrench to get some grip and give it a counterclockwise turn. Be very careful with this. These threads, unlike most vacuum fillers, are made out of plastic which is nice because it's plastic on plastic, so you don't have to worry about, you know, threads grinding away and it has a very smooth operation. But at the same time, it's also not that durable. So be very careful with this piece. At this point, the barrel's empty and we have our filling rod. Um, this is the connector piece that we just talked about. And then we have the main seal that's used for filling the pen and a shutoff valve seal. I have seen people remove this shutoff valve seal to make it so that they don't have to unscrew the piston knob when they have long writing sessions. So that's a good hack. Uh, personally, I'm gonna keep it in place, but something to maybe consider. And at this point, we have the pen fully disassembled. To reassemble, we'll start with the filling unit and the barrel. The filling unit gets placed inside the barrel and gets screwed down in a clockwise turn. You can tighten this to finger tight or use the wrench to get a little bit of extra torque and make sure that it's all the way down. To check and make sure that you aren't having leakage, you can pull the piston rod back, place your um, hand over the front of the barrel and give it a push. If I release at this point, about halfway through the stroke, it should travel right back to the starting position. Perfect. Next, we have the nib and feed. If you look closely, the feed has two recesses that um, help align the nib properly. And then that whole thing gets pushed right into the section. I haven't seen any notches on this section, so you can orient it however you want. We'll then screw that section onto the barrel. It is a good idea to add silicone grease to this portion to help prevent any leakage. I'll screw down the uh, vacuum filling system. Throw the cap on. And at this point, we're ready to ink up. Inking up the Pilot Custom 823, today I selected a Roshizuku Yamabudo, which is a nice deep purple. We'll open up the bottle, unscrew the cap, rotate the back piston knob and extend it all the way back. 
Submerge the pen into the ink and start giving that piston a push down. Hold it there for a second. Let's take a look at how our fill is. It's a little tricky to see in this finish. We're right about here, which is a nice half fill. If you want to go ahead and get a full fill, hold the nib upright, extend the rod all the way down, and push it up until you start to see ink coming out of the top of the feed. Right there, we see it at the very bottom. Okay, I'm gonna hold the piston rod in that position, submerge the pen again into ink, and push it down. And now we should have a full fill. I don't even see any bubbles in there. Let's go ahead and screw on our piston knob, wipe off the excess ink. Cap up the pen and the bottle, and we're ready to write. Okay, writing with the Pilot Custom 823, cap unscrews, and I'm gonna unscrew the back piston knob to open up the shutoff valve. Our nib is a 14 karat gold medium. And it's a beautifully tuned nib. However, it didn't start this way. I showed during my nib tuning video that this actually had a little bit of baby's bottom. And that wore away after a few pages of writing, so now I really don't have any skips, and it's a very smooth and well-tuned nib. Our ink. Roshizuku. Yama. Budo. For flex, I'll turn the page. You can push out a little bit of line variation, but not much. Um, if you do want to push out more line variation, you're going to want to purchase this with a soft nib, either a soft fine or a soft medium. Or you could consider getting it in a falcon nib, which has a bit of flex to it. For reverse writing, it's quite a bit scratchier, but definitely doable. And the feed mostly kept up. It did run a little bit dry. So in a pinch, I would say you could reverse write to get a thinner line, but it's not the most pleasurable writing experience. So I personally wouldn't recommend it. So what do I think? Of the Pilot Custom 823. I really like this pen. It has been on my short list of Grail pens ever since I started getting into fountain pens. I purchased the Wingsung 699 originally in order to get a feeling for using a vacuum filler as well as getting a feeling for how this pen would fit in the hand. And I really loved it. So eventually I saved up and went for this one. The writing experience certainly doesn't disappoint. The comfort of this pen is very, very good. I can use this pen for long writing sessions without any discomfort, and it has a huge ink supply, so you're really never gonna worry about running out of ink. In terms of areas to improve this pen, aesthetically, I think it would be nice if they offered it with flat finials. I think there are quite a few people that prefer that over rounded. Um, also, different colors would be a welcome addition to this pen. In terms of the actual design itself, I would have preferred if they had a step instead of an ink liner in here. Since it's difficult to disassemble this, 
uh, a step would have been a welcomed addition there. And then for the back portion, it takes quite a few turns to open up that shutoff valve. And I don't mind doing it. It's a little bit of a ritual when you're getting ready to write with this pen, but it also is a little bit annoying how many turns it takes. I would have rather had them use something like a bayonet style locking mechanism, similar to what Visconti uses in their capping and uncapping. But other than that, I do think this is a fantastic pen. It's a hallmark and an iconic pen at this point for many pen collectors. A grail pen for me, as I mentioned. And I guess that's one other item too. I wish that they would maybe consider making this with a stainless steel nib and drop the price significantly so it's a little bit more attainable. At the current price, it's, it's kind of out of the reach for many pen enthusiasts. But if you are able to take the plunge and spend the money on this, you will not be disappointed. And that just leaves me to say, Thank you for watching.